Welcome to Arsenal above all, fresh off the, um, what what, you, what can you call that? Um, uh, a return to top table, top level football. Wow. Uh, I had a bit of everything tonight and uh, I've got Steve Asakwe, uh to go through it with me. Uh, we sort of watched a few games uh, in our time working at Arsenal, Champions League games, so we know <laughs> we've been through it <laughs> like we have again tonight and uh, we've got all of that to talk about and the big uh, controversial decision at the end and lots more. But before all of that, let's go. Welcome to the show, Steve. How you doing, man? How you feeling right now? What's, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your blood pressure like? Is it okay? Is it, uh, you know? It's calmed down well, now. I mean... It was still quite bad, especially towards the end there. Um, and we'll talk about it, I'm sure. But um, yeah, it's what was a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So they say love is, but it's got nothing compared to football, is it? You nothing know I mean? compares to it. But, nothing uh, compares to this feeling. But no, thanks for your time uh, tonight. Uh, obviously, I know it's, it's late, and yeah, just fresh off the uh, <clears throat> uh, off pitch, so to speak. You know, the final whistle going at Emirates uh, in a. Uh, a, a, a proper ding dong, you know, proper sort of heavyweights slugging each other. There was obviously another ding dong going on um, in Madrid as well. City and uh, Madrid drawing three all. Us, we drawing uh, two two with Bayern Munich tonight. Um, what's your initial thoughts, Steve? Just off the off the back of that, um, did you think we played? A little, was it a little bit of experience played its part tonight? Did we seem to play the occasion? A little bit, or was it just fine? Were a little bit more streetwise, or a combination of both? What was your thoughts really on, on uh, what transpired uh, at the end of the summer? Yeah, I, I do think it's um, it's a little bit of everything. To be fair, um, we did we played the occasion. Um, we we weren't our usual selves. Um, in in up until our goal, we we looked we looked comfortable, and then uh, we kind of rushed and panicked a little bit. Um, and within two seconds, they've gone and scored, you know, a good, great, great first goal for them. Um, and then just a lack of composure. It's unlucky. It's unlucky. I mean, I did think, I did think Raya was, was quite far out um, from mm. his goal, but he, that's what he does. Um, yeah. So, you know, he, he's always that far out when those like sort of long balls that are there. And that's the whole point of him being the sweeper keeper. Um, but I did think he was quite far out. So then Gabriel couldn't really then pass to him. And then panicked. You know, it's, it's the one time I've seen him panic this season. And although he was kind of under under control with the ball, it just it, it had a bit too much on it for I think Kiri to pick up and and then they're, and then they're through. I, it's a combination of everything. Bayern Munich and no mugs. You know, they're they're an experienced team. They've got um, Champions League winners with yeah. Bayern Munich at their club. Um, They've won multiple titles this team, even with the new additions who haven't won anything yet. Um, so yeah, there was there was a bit of naivety and a bit of experience from them, and yeah, it's a frustrating. Yeah, I mean, so you start off at the top. So the lineup, obviously, that's something that you know sends a, a, a detonation throughout the whole Arsenal fan base. And I think um, I was surprised that he went with Kivior. Um, I thought Tommy Asu would have started, and obviously hindsight is a brilliant thing. But uh, we saw the way um, um, Sane uh, started to play that first half tonight, you know, and, and obviously he was played such a key part in, the, in their two goals. Um, was you surprised with that? Was you was you thinking Kirill would go back in, or was you thinking it was Tommy Asu? A lot of people kind of didn't think it was going to be Zinchenko just because of the defensive aspect as usual. But what was your thoughts on, on the lineup? You know, and, and again, Martin Eddie coming in as well. Was you was you kind of happy with that? I think you said you was in the uh, when I said you in the clip of the, uh, the the snap of the of the lineup. But what was you what was your thoughts on that on the lineup? And looking in hindsight now, um, and, and yeah. the impact of, of the substitutions, is particularly in the second half, um, especially with Jesus again. You know, he gets an assist in the Champions League. It's weird. He looked. He he he, he doesn't seem to have that much composure. In the Premier League, but in the Champions in the Champions League, he's just like sort of zeros, you know, fully focused. You know, great assist tonight. He looked really on it when he came on. But 
yeah, would you would you now have <laughs> started him on the left again in that aspect and maybe had uh, Tommy Asu behind him? I was happy with the with the with the team. Um, I would have maybe have liked to have seen Tommy Asu, but again, he didn't even come on, so he's not. <clears throat> he must not be fully fit. Um, <laughs> I was happy with Martinelli starting. Um, I thought we needed pace to, to try and match their pace as well. Um, I just don't think he saw enough of the ball, really. Hindsight will tell us that maybe Kibrio should have started and maybe someone like Tommy Asu could have started. Or, but like I said, he didn't get on. So it's, it's, it's pointless putting him into the picture when he didn't get on. So that, to me, says he's not fully fit. Um you then risk it and play Zinchenko there. Um, I was I was I was happy enough with the team. Left back was probably the only worry, um, but yeah. you can only guess who's fit and who's fully available. And uh, Arteta probably just didn't feel that Tommy Asu could start the game, um, mm. and that's you know, that's his choice. That's 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 what the manager's about. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But to see Martin, what yeah, it's going to be interesting to see exactly now with what he's seen tonight and what they analyse. And obviously, we've got, uh, we've got to come on Sunday with Villa. Uh, what does he do in that regards? Does he get, does he play Silk Tommy Asu, for example, and, and maybe party to get some minutes in their legs because they're going to be used, you know, going to be kind of vital out there uh, in Germany, especially if the game goes deep, you know, to extra time and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of at the time thought. Uh, Kimio was a, was a big, big shout. And um, he looked like, again, the occasion definitely got to him. You know, Sala, he was, was taking the he was doing some some outrageous bits of um, skill, flicking it around the corner, flicking it through his legs from one foot to the other. Um, and, and yeah, I I, I, I would have played uh, uh, Tommy Asu, but again, like you said, the fact that he didn't come on uh, in the second half and you know, he went with Sinchenko, maybe kind of was saying that he's maybe take, picked up a knock again or he just wasn't. Fit because he came up against Brighton, didn't he? So, uh, so yeah, it was kind of kind of strange that he, he wasn't featured. Um, but yeah, it was an edgy start. You know, it, it looked like you know, like I said, the occasion got to us a little bit. Um, uh, buying lots of uh, possession and uh, Musiala looked really dangerous and stuff. But then we got the goal and um, a, you know, brilliant, brilliant finish from from Saka. Um, I thought he played well tonight. He he. he was up against obviously Davis and obviously you know knew that he had to use his kind of mouse to beat him rather than you know his sort of speed and his strength because obviously Davis has, has got that in abundance and he was inverting a lot as well and causing some of problems. But it was a great finish from uh, Saka. Uh, Saka. Um, um, after that, I, I hate to say it, but after that, uh, there's a golden chance that, that fell to your boy. And um, you need to have words with him, man, because he, he he needs to be he needs to be tucking that because minutes later, um, all the all the everything unravels. Um, what was your what was your thoughts on that? Because he was causing a lot of damage, and it seemed to me after that chance went and after the, um, the goals conceded, he really had a bad second half. He was giving the ball away a hell of a lot. But what was your thoughts on on that goal and just how it seemed like we maybe just got a little bit too excited after that time because we were really, really open, which is strange for me because Arsenal, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, we go one to up and then we were all about suffocation, right? We're all about controlling the game, really. And we weren't really, we weren't really do that. We were only on the front foot, which was good to see, but it just seemed like we were just too open because um, Raya and, and uh, oh, sorry, um, Gabriel and uh, Saliba were so high up and just leave all that space in behind for Gnabry and, and Sally to, to, to run into. But what was your thoughts on just obviously that 10 minute spell after that 10 minute spell when obviously Saka scored his goal, uh, Ben White missed his chance and how it just seemed to just swing the momentum in their favour because we then conceded that ridiculous goal. We, you know, for me, Reyes, just all the fingerprints are all in him for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you... <laughs> I'd expect Ben White to score it because he's Ben White. Do you know what I mean? I, I expected yeah. him to score it just because of who he is. Um, and it, it, it's one of those moments when you as a fan go, that's a big chance. Are we going to pay for it? And 
we kind of did. Um, their, like I said, their first goal thing of beauty. To, you know, you take your hats off to them. You go, it's a good goal. There was opportunities um, to maybe try and pull him back and pick up a yellow card, maybe. Um, but you take your hats off and they, they score a great goal. Um, the second goal, we, we, for some, as you said, Mike, just the beginning of that piece, we didn't take our usual self. Um, this is where the experience comes into the naivety and playing the occasion. Um, what we should have done is compose ourselves before going, right, let's go for the attack. Let's go for the kill. We should have tried to compose ourselves and just hold back for a little bit to see what they will see what they're going to offer. Um, we didn't do that, and that's part of the occasion and the inexperience. Munich went okay. Well, we're still going to play our type of dominant way. Neuer's got some good footwork with his feet, obviously, and on the on in, in goal, and they're up the other end of the pitch and they're putting it in. Um, we just it was a shaky ten minutes. It was a shaky 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, and. Two shots, two big chances created, and they were clinical. And that's 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 how ruthless the Champions League is. Um, if you're not clinical, Ben White scores that chance. We're having a different. We're, we're probably having a different conversation. Um, yeah. Don't score that chance. Big chance. Five minutes, score one, then get another, and you're looking at yourselves going. We've all hyped ourselves up a lot here for this game, when mm. I think some of us were always a bit cautious that this is still a Bayern Munich side. Um, yeah. They've got that European know-how and yeah, it's just, it's it's frustrating that we didn't, that we just, we weren't the Arsenal that we've been this calendar in the year. Yeah, it, it, it kind of, the, the game kind of showed you that um, the metrics in, in such, in, in, in a sense with, you know, Bayern scoring the most goals in, you know, the Bundesliga, despite them, you know, being 16 points off of Leverkusen, who can win the league at the weekend. Um, you know, they they, you know, they showed that they've, that they've, you know, their ability up front today, um, how dangerous they are, but they also showed how, you know, vulnerable they are at the back. Whereas we've kind of showed that, we've shown the vulnerability at the back, which we haven't shown for a long time. And, but we also showed that, you know, we're okay, look, we scored two goals. But if it's, if it's tonight, you're saying, okay, well, if we score two goals against Bayern tonight, you kind of take that. You may want a third, but you, you kind of take that. You didn't think we're going to let in the, the goals that we did. And, and the diff, you know, after the, the the first goal, you know, the run that Ray, that's, that Sane made, you know, just no one getting near him. So many, you know, they normally say, you know, after every two mistakes, you know, leads to a goal. That was the case in the first one, you know, because that was Raya coming out too far and then Gabriel played a, a blind pass to Rice. It kind of, you know, it was away from him. The second goal, I mean, you could count maybe four, five, six mistakes in that moment, people making a wrong decision and which led to Saliba um, giving away the penalty. Yeah, and it was just, um, yeah, it was just, just, uh, just frustrating because, we didn't give a true reflection of ourselves having been for the last three or four games. So then at half time, obviously we're going two one at half time, or two one down at half time. Second half, you know, <laughs> substitution. We think, okay, he's probably been on maybe his usual trust hardly been on Zinchenko. And at that point we're thinking, oh my god, you know, Sane is gonna have an even more of a um field day um you know in, in the second half. And uh he didn't really he had this couple of worrying moments but the force behind that, Steve, was that just because he wanted to get a little bit more control in midfield? Because for me, it looked like most of the game, uh, most of that the game, we, we were just all the 50 50s, um, uh, their two set of midfielders were just just bossing it all the time. You know, Odegaard did what he did, he was winning the balls back, a lot of recoveries was really good. But I thought Rice and Jorginho were, were definitely off of it a little bit tonight, tonight. And it wasn't until later on when uh, Trossard came on. I thought Rice was a little bit more to himself because he's kind of slotted back into into the six. But what was your thoughts on just how we approached the second half? You know, do you think it, we, we were we over we over overcomplicated a little bit, panicked a little bit in certain instances, or did you just think it was going to be something we were going to have a big chance? We just needed to make sure we capitalised on it. 
Yeah, I think in a game like this, you always know you're going to get big chances. Um, if, if you're creating, which we were, you're going to get big chances. It's just, it's, it's again, it's being clinical, having cool heads around. Um, when when uh, Trossard and uh, Jesus came on, um, it, yeah, it was it was it was good good substitutions. The Zinchenko one, um, he's for me. I think sometimes with Zinchenko. I think he tries to do too much, um, and I mean that. I mean that like in a good way. But sometimes he tries to do too much for his ability. Um, by that I mean he takes too many touches when he should he should be distributed a bit more quickly, and that can sometimes slow down the pace of our game, which is why I think he's not been starting and won't really get back to starting. Arteta was probably thinking, let's try and get hold of midfield so we can get Rice running in um, from midfield to make up an extra man in the in the attack. Um, which is why Zinchenko, you know, most times you see him centre of the pitch to the right hand side, you know, trying to play balls and stuff like that. Um, but he's, he plays too much, and then he gives the ball away, and then we're under pressure. And because everyone is up front, you're relying on the pace of everybody else to get back. And yeah, that's 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 my that's my worry with him is when when he inverts, he hasn't got the cover there. Um, when when Jesus and Trossard came on, I mean, again. Jesus in the Champions League is just different. I don't know why he's he's he yeah. turns into prime Ronaldo R9. Yeah. Um the composure for the assist was 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 special and, and the finish again uh it was, it was another special goal. Um fair play to Trossard, he came on and he affected the game. And um yeah, great finish. But the, the assist from Jesus, just just to hold it up and then the awareness just to lay it off to him. Yeah, that's class. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a brilliant, it's a brilliant finish, but the brilliant uh, uh, move actually, one touch stuff, uh, nice ball near that tackle as well, um, and yeah, he's, he's having that composure in the box, which again you don't normally see in the Premier League, um, but in the Champions League, well, just like I said, it just, uh, just activates a switch, and uh, he's, uh, he, yeah, he was he was tremendous when he came on, and I'm sure he's played himself into uh, starting uh, out there. Because of, yeah, there were a few players tonight that I was kind of building up, and I was thinking, yeah, you know, I thought Martin Early against Kimmich, um, I thought he would have basically run him like he did that Seville uh, fullback when we played him in Champions League, but obviously the levels. Um, and he he was really disappointing tonight. Um, I thought Havertz was disappointing as well. Uh, the, you obviously a lot of effort, but just nothing, uh, you know, uh, effective. You know, not, he didn't really create any 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 chances. Um, Saka played well. Odegaard played played well. Again, I thought the two midfielders were a bit off today. And I thought the two centre backs just were a little bit. You know, generally the team was just off today. And you know, and with that performance we had at the weekend against Brighton, you know, you can kind of say, okay, you can take your eye off it or just be off edge a little bit. But then you you got to look at who you're up against. You're up against a, a, a front four that were, were pretty pretty special. Well, I think maybe. The way that they set up, looking like looking at it, where it was just obviously Kane up front and he had the three behind, they that interfered with Jorginho's game because he just didn't have, have any space to sort of to to operate in. So that was clever on two shows part. But that's why it makes next week fascinating because it'd be how how do you approach it now? It would be great to have a, have a lead, but um, I don't know. I just think now uh, we've got to just obviously deal with with uh, Villa and then just see. How the bodies are, you know, who's who's fresh and ready to go, um, who does he play against um, against Villa? Um, but before all that, um, obviously we looked like we were going to maybe get a big chance uh, at the end, Steve, and um, uh, we were making loads of mistakes. You know, Zinchenko was trying to force things, like he said, um, just giving the ball away. You know, just giving the ball away so much, and I think that's probably the thing that's really going to annoy. Um, I'll take more than anything, you know, the fact that, you know, he's just, you know, we, we just gave, we just gave the ball away so much, you know, the, the whole thing of control and everything that, that he, he prided himself on, you know, looking at the, the key stats of the possession, you know, 57% possession, um, we had more attempts and um, more attacks, only three corners, you know, the whole game. Um, we just, we just made a lot of, um, Unforced errors, you know. And if you're like in a, you know, in a tennis situation, if you're playing, if you're playing tennis, you do that, you you you're gonna you're gonna lose. If you make keep making more 
force errors than, than your opponent, and you're going to lose or, 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 or come close to losing. Obviously, um, the big thing, obviously, at the end was the penny, or, or you know, whether it was or wasn't. Um, what was your thoughts on it? Because, you know, I've looked at the replays a couple of times before we, we started tonight. What was your initial thoughts and what was your thoughts after you saw the replay? It looked to me, it looked like it, I'm surprised it didn't go to VAR. That's the, that's the only thing I, I, I'd say. Because there's, I'm not sure, probably on, on, you know, on, on TNT, they probably say whether there was a check or not, but it didn't come through really to say whether there was a check on, on that. But what was your thoughts on it, on it? anyway, Steve, on that, on that clinic show? Um, I'll go back to quickly just to Ben White and uh, that block he did. Um, yeah. yeah, Ben White, he, 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 for the goal he missed, he, he made a key block and um, yeah, fair play to him, man. He's, he's, he's still Benny Blanco, so yeah, keep your head high. Um, initially, I thought it was a pen. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm there screaming pen, 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 pen. Um, I didn't know who we are and uh, we don't get those sort of pens. So as soon as the refs waved it away, um, I was just like, okay, well, that that's it. You know, it, not much has gone to VAR this evening because um, there's not much that's needed to go to VAR. Um, but they've not overturned anything. So it's, 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 if it's not a pen, it's not a pen. Uh, people are saying that Saka left his foot in that. Again, I, I've, I've already just watched it. I've not had a chance to watch the replays or anything like that. Um, I think he's his body's more ahead where he should where he can't move out of the way. If you see, I mean he can't move out of Noya out of way of Noya. So it's it's a pen, if if you know what I mean. The fact that he's left his foot in a bit, um that's just I guess that's what players do. They they leave their foot in to, to make sure there's contact, but it's still a pen. Um and that's yeah. why I think it should have been given. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm amazed that um, it wasn't checked. I don't know what the referee he was mentioning to, to some of the players that it, it, it wasn't a penalty or had been checked. But um, yeah, I, I, I was really surprised. I thought he had a fairly decent game, but um, but yeah, you saw Saka. He he was livid. He was yeah in front of the ref and everything at the end. And um, lucky, yeah, to get pulled away. Lucky he didn't uh, pick up a yellow. But one player that did pick up a yellow was. Um, uh, Davis, so so that's a that's a um, interesting uh, change of tax in terms of what Sushel's going to do. Obviously, he, he's not got him to, to pick pick from, and what does that do to sack his game? Again, I thought he played well and um, faced the challenge, took his goal really well. Um, but yeah, just think a few. You kind of think of it differently that we have a lot of players off par tonight, and we still didn't lose. Um, we we got a draw we could have snatched a win um i think it's almost like you know um uh, you know like, like you know you've got another sporting analogy you've got you've got a box you've done you've got a couple of rounds or maybe you've had a, had a title fight you've had a draw and you kind of use that the, the analysis to see you know where the weaknesses are and what your weaknesses were and make sure that when you have the rematch um you kind of make sure that you you're a bit more sharper and you're a bit more focused on, on, on focusing on the weaknesses. And um, I think that's what we have to do. I think um, we know defensively away from home, we're, we're, we're pretty solid. We need to, we, we can rely on that. I just think it's going to be a case of people. We're going to have to rely on people like Trotard and Jesus for their composure. And I think, I think Trotard is, I think Trotard is the best, the, the, the most, the best finisher in the, in the, that we've got out of the lot that we've got at the moment. I think if you give him a chance, he's going to put it away eight times out of ten. The rest of them, you're kind of thinking, okay, six or seven. But I think he's a lot more clinical, and you saw that with his finish tonight. And yeah. it's going to be interesting to see. I think I think Jesus is 100% putting himself into starting that game. And I think it would be a case of maybe maybe Martin Lilly, what do you think? Maybe Martin Lilly coming off, uh, coming off the bench this time. I think he'll stay with Pavard yeah. up front. So I think it would probably be Jesus on the left and then Trossard might need to come on uh, for, for different options. But um, before we go to that, what do you think is going to happen? How this is going to reflect on Sunday? Do you think it's going to be a, a, you know decent rotation again? Obviously, Villa have got um, a game on for, uh, Thursday. We've got a couple of days on them in terms of recovery uh, for the, for their conference league game, haven't they? So 
Uh, what, what do you what do you think, or what would you like to see on Sunday? Because obviously we've got we've got that to take care of as well. Um, we've got to win Sunday. Uh, there's 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 no second there's no second chances. Um, so you play your fittest and best team on Sunday. Um, if we're able to go and get a couple of goals where we're clear, then you can make your substitutions. But we have to win that game. Um, it, it makes our game in Munich more difficult. But um, the one thing that you mentioned at the beginning there was those second balls. And Arteta will just be saying, there's no way you can let them win all those second balls and not have anybody else around. He won't, he won't, he won't accept that in the second leg. He won't say to the players, that's an acceptable level of performance. Um, I need you more on it. Bayern are difficult at home. I think they're very really lost. Yeah, go on. No, go on. Go on. No, no, I was, I was just going to say, Bayern are difficult at home. So they've already lost two games, um, two yeah. or three games in the Bundesliga at home. So, um, again, they're no mugs and they're European specialists. So, Do you think maybe that's because maybe, maybe then he'll need some more physicality in that aspect and maybe that is part of starting instead of Jorginho. Um because I think Parton came on, he looked he looked a bit rusty. But to be fair, he only came on with six minutes to go. And you know, the, the game was still flying. It, 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 it was still going at 100 miles an hour. It wasn't like Bayern tried to slow it down really. Um then he was still going for it. Obviously um Conan hit the post didn't he as well uh, right at the end. Um, and we were we were going for it, and obviously we led to that to the penalty shout. So you kind of think maybe if he had played him, maybe gave him twenty minutes, he might have looked a little bit better because he picked up the yellow as well, didn't he? So it looked really rusty. But do you think in that instance, because of that whole physicality, you know how he talks about, you know, he, we know upset upset effects when people lose their jewels. Um, we know we know about that. Um, so do you think Win he? Jewels, guys. Yeah, yeah. I get upset. <laughs> I don't want to get him upset again. Do you think that's maybe that's a way in for a party? He plays Sunday, possibly. Maybe gets yeah. some minutes under his belt, 60 minutes, 65 minutes, take him off, and then put him in ice for for uh, the return on Wednesday. Or do you think he goes to Jorginho again because it's more about controlling the game more? But I think Bayern will be on the front foot, won't they? They'll be at home. Um, the, the fans weren't there tonight, so they're going to want them to be on the front foot. But, so you would you keep the midfield that midfield the same? Would you push maybe Rice more to the six? Um, so he's kind of there up against Luciano and stuff. Or I would. No, I think I'd take a lights him as the eight. You know, um, mm. I if he we could, can he get could put, to start, he could put Havertz back into left eight. If you talk about physicality, the way you talk about physicality and having. Having legs and and, 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 end, and bodies around, you know, people, someone who's going to keep running and disrupt and stuff. We know that's where he started off the season, and then that way you enable uh, Jesus to play up front, and then enable maybe Martin to stay in the side or Trossard to who who knows a bit more. He's he'll he'll keep the ball more maybe. So you know, it could be a possibility because I've got, got I can't remember his name, the, the guy who. Um, the centre midfield, Cortez, Leo Cortez, um, Cortego, of his, his name is. He's 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 solid. You know, he's a strong, he's a strong guy, and obviously, you know, Havertz has played against him in, in you know in Germany and stuff like that. So maybe having them two up against each other maybe might be an option. I don't know, but well, yeah, what, what would you what would you do? Well, if you can get Tommy at left back, that has a bit more physicality there. Um, I'm not sure about Havertz in the in the left eight, but. Um, if Rice plays the six and Havertz plays the left eight, then you know it's 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 okay. But to do that, you do need Tomiyasu at left back. Both Kirior and Zinchenko won't be good enough. A for the pace with Kirior, and B for the positional uh, thing with Zinchenko. So Tommy would need to be there. So then the back line changes to Tommy, Saliba, Gabriel, and Ben White. Um, happy with that. Uh, midfield, if you're going. Um, the midfield three of Erdegaard, um, Rice, and uh, Havertz as the as the eight, and then up front, Jesus then has to start. I think I, I think it might be better 
if Jesus starts up front, that we have Gabriel Martinelli on the on the left to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think they, I think them two work well together, and Martinelli tends to put in a bit more of a shift when the Gabriel starts up front with him. So yeah, um, that's true. That, that's 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 the question. But <sighs> yeah, it's going to be what? interesting. I think I think you got we got to try and obviously get Villa out of the way. Um, we, we we owe them for that if we up there and. And I think it's basically going to see how how the land lies in in terms of the, the recovery and what have you. But I, I I agree. I think yeah, he, he's probably looking at that side of the the, the, the jewels that we lost and the mistakes we've, we, we've made um, in there. And I think that's going to worry him. He's going to want to maybe put someone else in there. It should be interesting. He, he's probably just going to play do the same as set the uh, in the field. Um, have Jorginho in there trying to control and stuff, but I just thought he got overrun today and I think he just couldn't get away from that. Their their front three who were playing off a cane, you know, who, um, I think they I think they normally do that, but I'm not sure. But if if, he, if he's changed it for if two shells changed it for that, then that shows you how good he is, you know, because he's really a good tactical uh genius, you know, and before he gets kicked out of, of another club and goes elsewhere. But um but no um it's gonna be interesting Steve obviously a few few you know that's another game not to mark off, we've got obviously seven games left in the league, another game left in the Champions League, uh, so eight more games. Hopefully, it will be uh, ten more games if we if we manage to, to progress. But then when you see what's happened in the other uh, side, the, you know the, the other match, you kind of don't know if you want that smoke, <laughs> don't know if you want it at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, but no. the goals in TNT, you just sort of go. Yeah, crackers in that game. Corners and volleys and stuff like that. It's like, wow, man, <laughs> this is like levels. But so, um, but yeah, this is what we want. It's, it's, it was enjoyable to be um, in a game of this magnitude again, be at the, at the top table in the last eight in Europe. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's hope we we can. Uh, we, I think we'll, we'll we'll score over there. It just depends on on uh, how many. And, uh, and, uh, we'll see what the thing is, just, just to add very quickly, the not having the away goal is yeah. it just means it's nil nil. Yeah, it, it, it's just straight yeah. shootout, straight shootout um, football. It's just win, win the game. I mean, it would have been great. I mean, what we've done, yeah, what we've done with, with Liverpool and City would have been perfect. That would have been enough for us to, to progress, right? We, we beat them at home and then we drew them away. That would have been perfect for us to do that tonight. It's just unfortunate we couldn't. You know, so might have to do it the other way around. You know, win over there and draw home so let's hope uh you know again those those guys are you know we know they're proud guys of their performance they would have been absolutely steaming that they were letting the goals in the manner that they have this you only, you only got to look at the way they celebrated that 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 block from gabriel last last against brighton to know that they are absolutely kicking themselves with the way they can see those two goals so they're going to want to go over there and, and put in a defensive masterclass on on the likes like we did against city and then leave it to the boys up top to try and do some magic and nick it. So, so let's see. So fingers crossed. Uh, we've got a villa to take care of. Uh, Unai, Unai, Uncle Unai coming back and um, you know, let's, let's, let's uh, give him a, a nice reception and a, and a, and a horrible I goodbye. Think. They get back on their coach back up to Birmingham and uh, get three points against them and stay where we are in the league. And then we'll focus to the return. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for your time, man. Uh, appreciate Thanks, Mike. it. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, we'll be back after um, the uh, uh, Villa game and have a quick uh, review of the Bayern game, depending on how things are, and uh, all that business. So, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Um, well, I'm just going to go and uh, have a rest, have a, have, a, have a little shot of rum. Well, it's not a school night because it's half term still, so I'm going <laughs> to um, So, I'm going to do that now. So, thanks, Steve. Um, thanks, lots of Ryan. Family. Yeah, love to the family. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's do the business. The man, remember. Giroud into the box. And they have it immediately!